WrestleMania 40 has came and it is gone. And it is a new day in WWE. Now, Triple H has been running things in WWE for about a year now, a little about a year and a half or so. Um, and all weekend long, you hear uh, guys like Paul Heyman and Michael Cole, even his wife, uh, the returning Stephanie McMahon, pushed this thing about the Triple H era. Like WWE has shifted into the Triple H area. And the content has been far more improved under the Triple H era, right? But WWE has been really pushing this. Michael, like I said, Michael Cole, Stephanie McMahon, Paul Heyman, you name it. You had some um, Cody Rhodes, uh, a lot of the superstars, even in interviews, has been pushing this idea about the Triple H era. And why has they been plastering us with this thing about the WWE being the Triple H era? Well, it's funny that you say that. So, this is an effort to create distance from Vince McMahon. And it's a deliberate effort. Right? Now, Dave Meltzer, he's one of the um, wrestling um, critics on his um, Wrestler Observer radio uh, podcast. WWE is emphasizing the need to disassociate themselves from Vince McMahon. Now, mind you, if there are no Vince McMahon, there's no WWE. Because when Vince McMahon bought the WWE from his daddy back in the 80s, his intention was to make WWE the global phenomenon that it is today. But in light of the sexual assault allegations that's been placed upon Vince McMahon. And there's been many sexual assault allegations, none more so than the one that's been um, placed uh, by Janelle Grant. Janelle Grant's um, allegations have really caused a stir within WWE. If y'all remember, there was an email an anonymous email that was sent back in 2022 that triggered this whole thing. And a bombshell report from the Wall Street Journal detailed all of the allegations against Vince McMahon, which prompted him to step down from WWE, which allowed Stephanie to come in and take over along with Triple H and Nick Khan. We thought that Vince McMahon himself would have, you know, fade to black. You know, never to be heard from again. Instead, he calls an audible in January 2023 where he basically bullies his way back into the company, fires a uh, fires a couple people on uh, the uh, board of directors and hired a couple of his um, foot clan members or foot soldiers or yes men, right? He then turns around and sells the company to Ari Emanuel and Endeavor. And with the UFC coming into the fold, this how you got TKO. And Vince McMahon was supposed to be the, um, the head honcho of WWE while still being under the moniker of TKO. He thought that he was going to bully his way back in the company, sell the company, and then Ari Emanuel would give him the blessing to run the company as he sees fit. But when you sell the company, you're no longer the owner. So when you're no longer the owner, you don't have the ability to call the shots. Now, mind you, Vince McMahon has had a, he had tons of stock into Endeavor and TKO. Those allegations come out from Janelle Grant about 
uh, the sex trafficking and all that other stuff, stuff that I've well documented on this platform, right? And that pretty much signaled the end of Vince McMahon in WWE because Mark Shapiro, who's the COO of uh, TKO, and then you have Ari Emanuel, who's the brother of Rahm Emanuel, the former Chicago mayor who covered up the murder of Laquan McDonald. He is the CEO of TKO and Endeavor. Them two pretty much forced Vince McMahon to sell his stock in the company. And last I checked, uh, Vince, when Vince McMahon cashed out, it was over to the tune of one and a half billion dollars. So now he's seventy eight years old, and um, he'll he'll turn seventy nine this year, or whatever like that. And there is a federal investigation into the allegations from Janelle Grant. He's currently being investigated by the feds. Now, why didn't Vince McMahon get the same energy as P. Diddy, as P. Diddy, and or Diddy, or Puff Daddy, whatever he calls himself, has been, you know, news about him got plastered all over the airwaves. But Vince McMahon did the same thing, allegedly, and we didn't get the same energy. There was no wall-to-wall, eye-in-the-sky, number five on the dog coverage when it came to this guy. So the WWE is trying to distance themselves as far as they possibly can from the mess Vince McMahon has made over the years. That's why you hear about this shift and how they're doing business. And you you don't see some of the stuff that you saw in WWE um, back in the day, would it be evening gown matches or bra and panties matches or they um, wrestling in mud or you see somebody with, like, Sable, for example, where she had the pay- uh, fully loaded pay-per-view, right? Where she has her titties showing, but it has two handprints on her titties and shit, right? That's marked in black that you can't even see the nipple. Or you had a scene on Monday Night Raw where you had Edge and Lita Looked like they was about to get it on, like the break of dawn, when Edge finally uh, won the world uh, or the WWE Championship from John Cena, cashing in his money in the back contract. Or we can go down the line of the many sleazy, slutty, sweet, steamy, sexy interactions that you saw on TV, and if you thought that was gross in front of the camera imagine what the fuck was going on behind the scenes so all that being said right you don't see any of that stuff anymore and you don't see a whole lot of comedy skits anymore yeah there might be some that gets sprinkled here and there but for the most part you don't see a lot of that um stuff that you saw under the Vince McMahon um uh era um and Let's just keep this a buck. A lot of that stuff was getting lame. It was played out. It was the same old repetitive storylines over and over and over again. Same matches over and over and over again. Same people competing for the championship over and over and over again. And it was the product was getting stale. Okay. It was getting stale, especially when you run the same interactions of this is your life, right? Because it was popular under the rock and mankind. And then you see uh, John Cena had a a, a version of this is your life. And then Bailey had a a whole thing of this is your life too. So look, I say all that to say this. Triple H has done an amazing job with the WWE as far as like promoting the brand. Um, He has made changes. Over time, you have seen changes to the product from the staging to the lighting, the uh, music for Raw and SmackDown. Um, Raw is going to end up going to Netflix in 2025, January 2025. Raw is going to go to Netflix. Um, SmackDown is going to leave Fox and is going to join the USA Network. 
Now, whether or not they stay on Friday night is a whole different story. But you've seen the changes. Like, even during WrestleMania, the intro with him in the uh, as the voiceover. And I thought that intro um, that WWE created was dope as fuck. It was dope as fuck. So Triple H is changing WWE and uh and, and and you're starting to see the vision in his image. And is I I you know I, I really don't care for him as a performer, but as a as a content creator for WWE, oh man, this man has knocked it out the park. This man has knocked this thing out the park. WWE is far more entertaining to watch. You've seen more superstars compete for the championships, right? You know, the champion can never be stale. You know, the, the championship has been treated with respect, right? There's no there's no longer this hot potato championship where a guy wins the championship one week or two months or, or, or three months or even six months and then he loses it or whatever like that. And then he might come back and win it again. You know, the championships has been treated with respect. Because I remember one point, the Intercontinental Championship was an afterthought. The Intercontinental Championship was an afterthought at one point or another. When I grew up, the Intercontinental Championship used to be a springboard for you to be a main eventer. If you thought about all the guys who won the Intercontinental Championship, Bret Hart. Shawn Michaels, um, Mr. Perfect, um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H himself. Those guys have won the Intercontinental Championship, and that was used as a springboard for them to be a main eventer. Because a lot of those guys, with the exception of Mr. Perfect, did go on to become WWE champions. And then the United States Championship came over after the WWE bought out WCW because the United States Championship, at all with all its prestige, if you look at the, the, the amount of wrestlers that have won that championship, and that championship was a springboard to become the uh, WCW champion or whatever. What's up, CB Sports TV? Salute to you, bro. Good to see you, homie. Yeah, so, and the United States Championship was an afterthought. I mean, the only person that really brought any kind of prestige to the United States Championship after it after it came to the WWE was John Cena. What's up, Jonathan McFarlane? Salute to you, bro. Um, Cody Rhodes had an Intercontinental Championship reign, right? But... Yeah, uh, Cody Rhodes did bring back the whole um, traditional Intercontinental Championship belt. He did. He did bring that back. So now you start to see these championships are not being treated as an afterthought. As and gals who hold the championship are being treated with the respect and they're being treated as stars as such. I mean, if you look at the litany of superstars, as far as like female, you got Bailey, you got Sasha, or where she was in WWE, Sasha Banks, but she's Mercedes Monet, Bianca Belair, uh, Bailey, right? Becky Lynch. So you got all those females, and then you look at the male superstars, right? Like the Cody Rhodes of the world, and guys who's guys and the Damian Priest who I called it. I called it. I fucking called that shit with uh Damian Priest. So y'all gotta hey, motherfuckers better give me my flowers off that shit because I called it. I told you Damian Priest was gonna cash in on Drew McIntyre, right? But anyway, 
But if you look at the new superstars now, right, with the L.A. Knights, right? L.A. Knight was an afterthought in Vince McMahon had control. He had him as Max Dupree. Max Dupree with the maximum male models. I'm like, what kind of goofy-ass shit was that? Right? So, L.A. Knight, you got um, uh, um, Shinsuke Nakamura, fucking, um, who else? Who else? Because there's so many superstars, man. Drew McIntyre, right? Drew McIntyre was fired from WWE, right? When he was part of the 3MB. Right? Well, see, Jonathan, AJ Styles was already a household name throughout all over the world, right? Jeff Hardy was under Vince McMahon, right? But I'm talking about the superstars that are out now. I'm talking about the, the, the superstars now. Like, like I mentioned, LA Knight, and I, he's going to be my pick to win Money in the Bank, right? You got the Judgment Day. Right, Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley is an amazing champion. Her t- her title reign is amazing, right? Um, and I hope they do the same for Damian Priest. Roman Reigns, even after Triple H took, uh, you know, well, along with Paul Heyman, because Paul Heyman was pretty much the brainchild behind the whole uh, bloodline storyline, right? And Paul Heyman. When but even when he was Paul E. Dangerously back in the day, Paul Heyman had an eye for talent. If you if you wanted a guy to start up a company and which he did with ECW, and you wanted somebody to develop stars, there's no better individual than Paul Heyman. Then you got Jay Uso, who's broken off with the bloodline, became his own star. Jimmy Uso. Solo Sakura, a guy that's going to be a main event player for a long time. Because you know the Anawai family has this reach, this rich, deep-rooted history of wrestling. So Solo Sakura is going to be a main event player for a long time. So you got this new batch of superstars. CM Punk has came back, and CM Punk has been remarkable. That I'm telling you, that that storyline that they got with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, oh, my God, that long-term storyline has been amazing. It's going to come to a head sooner rather than later, but I, I hope they, um, they, they culminate that at SummerSlam. I hope that this long-term storyline, this beef that, Drew McIntyre, CM Punk got going on. I hope it culminates at SummerSlam. It might even culminate before at maybe at like the King and Queen of the Ring or maybe at Backlash or something like that. But I really hope they save that for SummerSlam with the constant trolling that both of them has engaged with each other. It is amazing, right? And then Gunther. You know, Gunther has had a, a you know, title reign that lasted almost two years with the Intercontinental Championship. Gunther is going to be a main event player, and I'm going to do a video probably within the next week or two, and we're going to talk about the WWE Draft because the WWE Draft is going to go down at the end of April, I say around the 26th, went or SmackDown and the 29th on Raw, and I'm going to make my prediction who I think is going to go to Raw or who I think is going to go to SmackDown or whatever like that. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes and stuff like that. But it's, once again, time where things get freshened up. And I'm going to give you a spoiler. I think Gunther goes to SmackDown and becomes a main event player on SmackDown. I think Gunther goes to SmackDown and becomes a main event player for the WWE Championship. Oh, by the way, uh... WWE has changed the name back from the Universal Championship to the uh, Undisputed WWE Champion. Right? So, Cody Rhodes is going to go to SmackDown, okay? 
they he might stay on Raw, and then but whoever is on Raw as the champion, the other person going to go to SmackDown. It is what it is, but expect Gunther to be a, a serious main event player for the uh, for the championship, whether it be for the WWE Championship or the World Heavyweight Championship. He's a bad he's a he's a bad guy, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, Gunther, yeah, watch out for him in 2024. Um, I think Bianca Belair is going to turn uh, turn heel. We starting to see little sprinkles of that, especially with Bailey and damage control and all that, and her unwillingness to forgive Bailey for all the stuff she's done to her over the last two years. I suspect there's going to be a heel turn for Bianca Belair. Now that Bailey is now the um, women's champion, right? And then, of course, Charlotte Flair is going to factor in at some point. Right, because you know Charlotte Flair is always in the championship picture. So, and it goes back to another thing. Um, I forgot to point out, right? The depth, and Paul Heyman pointed this out during his Hall of Fame ceremony speech. The depth of the roster. You have more superstars vying for the championship. It brings amazing content because it's one of the things where Vince McMahon was running things and you already knew who was going to win but like the way that a lot of these matches unfold and a lot of and, and the way that a lot of the content is being brought up by Triple H you really don't have an idea who's going to win yes C A A C B A. You right. I I agree with that a hundred percent. The only problem with that is I want to see Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. <laughs> I want to see Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair go at it, bro. Hey man, I don't. Hey, I want to see them two go at it, bro. But, and you know, I suspect that match will go down at WrestleMania forty one. I think Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. We'll go head to head at WrestleMania 41. But yeah, Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair, the history that they had at NXT, at NXT oh yeah, we got to see that match, man. We got to see that match. We got to see that match up, man. I'm t- I, look, we, Jay Cargill could come later. But and, um, speaking of Jay Cargill, right? I want to see Jay Cargill and Charlotte Flair go at it at SummerSlam. That's going to be a good matchup, right? Be uh, with um, Becky Lynch. No, I don't want to see that. I want to see Jay Cargill and Charlotte Flair go at it at SummerSlam. You heard it here first. Charlotte Flair right now is out of action due to a torn ACL, I think. Oh, and she and her real life husband is um. Oh, what the fuck his name? Um, Andrade. That's her real life husband. So, and Andrade, when he was in NXT, he held the NXT championship for a while. I think he lost it to Drew McIntyre, if I'm not mistaken. But um, he either lost it to Drew McIntyre or he lost it to um, Shinsuke Nakamura. But don't be surprised you start seeing Andrade get a push. You see him in the storyline with Rey Mysterio and um, the LWO. There's going to be a Carlito heel turn coming soon, too. Watch what I tell you. There's going to be, come, there's going to be a Carlito heel turn, and I don't be surprised if he ends up, you know, aligning himself with Santos Escobar. You say Flair won't be back by SummerSlam? Well, that sucks. Because she got hurt last year. So I thought she would have been hurt. I thought she would have been back by SummerSlam. I gotta look at that. I gotta look that up. I gotta look that up. Do I see John Cena winning a 17 world title? No. I don't see John Cena winning a 17 world title. I don't. 
Oh, she got hurt December. I thought she got hurt earlier than that. I thought she got hurt back in like October and something like that. Okay. Well, if she got hurt back in December, there ain't no way she'll be back by SummerSlam then. There ain't no way she'll be back by SummerSlam. Okay. Okay, well, and then at that point, then, um, like, okay, so if there's no, um, or she tore ACL and MCL, okay, I knew she tore something in her knee. I knew she tore something in her knee. That's why, uh, that's why I was, um, that's why I was thinking that, you know, she might have been back uh, around SummerSlam, whatever, like that, but I guess not. Okay, so Jay Cargill, um, I can see her going up against Rhea Ripley for the championship, right? But it, like I said, it, it, a lot a lot of this depends. A lot of the storyline depends on this WWE draft they got coming up. And, you know, that's something I'm going to have to double back and revisit after the draft. And then I can, you know, act to get a better gauge on um, – on upcoming matches for SummerSlam. And truth be told, SummerSlam probably, the card for SummerSlam probably already been, com- already done. It's probably already been done. If not, I st- hold on, I take that back. The card for SummerSlam is probably like 90% done. Of course, there's going to be some, um, some wrinkles that get made thrown in the, that might get thrown in there. Uh, obviously, if a superstar gets hurt and they and they and, and they end up out of action, that's going to uh, throw a wrench in a lot of the SummerSlam plans too. But I think the SummerSlam card is ninety um, percent done, and um, SummerSlam is going to be in Cleveland this year as well. Um, Logan Paul, a guy that you know Triple H signed, you know we all we all know he's brother the jake paul or whatever like that right but you know with his social media influence stuff like that logan paul you know he's you know they're trying to you know make him out to be a superstar and all that right and you know i'll give it to logan paul he actually can perform in wwe right now you know he got the you know he's he's the current united states champion the match he had with um Randy Orton and Kevin Owens at WrestleMania was good. And I thought the right person won. Because let's face it, Kevin Owens nor Randy Orton needed the championship. Neither one of them needed the championship. So it made sense that Logan Paul would retain. And um, so I see Logan Paul holding on to the championship for a while. And this goes back to what Triple H is doing within WWE. These champions are getting notice and they're getting the um and they're getting the um attention that they deserve, right? There's no longer this, you know, champion who's a placeholder, right? You say the storyline between the Rocky and Cody Rhodes. Um I can see that match. Yeah, you know what, Jonathan? Yeah, I think that match could go down to SummerSlam because I think Roman Reigns and The Rock is going to go at it at WrestleMania 41. So I can see Cody Rhodes versus The Rock at SummerSlam. And then maybe Roman Reigns interfering, you know, maybe costing The Rock um, a win over Cody Rhodes or whatever like that. And then there might be some jealousy, some animosity um, built up between The Rock and Roman Reigns, and then they finally go at it at uh, WrestleMania 41. Oh, and, and rumor has it that WrestleMania 41 is going to be in uh, Minneapolis at the uh, U.S. Bank Stadium. That's the rumor mill right now. Of course, a lot of the stuff is subjected to change. Um, Braun Breaker... Now, for those of you who don't know who Braun Breaker is, Braun Breaker is the, I think he's the son to Rick Steiner. 
and Scott Steiner is his uncle, right? He's the he's the son to Rick Steiner, and Scott Steiner is his uncle. So yeah, he's going to be a main event player. He uh, they definitely pushing him to be a main event player, and um, I think he stays on SmackDown, and I think. You're going to see him in different programs now. They're building him up now. You know, got many squash matches, but I think they're going to really ramp up the competition now after the heat out dropped the belt. Uh, him and um, Baron Corbin, who I think needs to be back on the main roster. And I think Baron Corbin needs to be in some of these high profile matches as well. We'll see. Because once again, the draft is coming up. But Braun Breaker, yeah, I can see him. Um, being that main event player in that um, on SmackDown. Um, but you know what? I, I would like to see him and Bobby Lashley go at it. Now that Bobby Lashley and um, Street Profits is done with the Final Testament or whatever like that, right? Um, even though I don't think Karrion Cross should be in a main event player, but AOP, on the other hand, definitely should be in the tag team title picture. Definitely, but I like to see Braun Bricker and Bobby Lashley go at it, right? I think that would be a good matchup for and a good test for Braun Bricker, right? Uh, and you know, Bobby Lashley for me personally, that's my favorite wrestler. Uh, Bobby Lashley is, and uh, I think Bobby Lashley needs to stay in the main event picture. Like, if you're gonna Maybe not put the championship on him, but definitely not have him middling around the mid card or whatever like that, right? Don't have Bobby Lashley in the damn mid card, for real. He need to be in the main event. You say AOP looks like they're going for the NXT championship? Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. But yeah, what's up, Alex? But yeah, I can see that too. I can see that too. Um, Karrion Cross, yeah. Um, look, he's a good wrestler. He he's a really good wrestler, right? He's a really good wrestler. It just I don't know what I don't know what's the deal with him, bro. Maybe he need to go back to that cycle, Karrion Cross or whatever like that. But I don't know. I, I just. Mm. I just, uh, I don't know, man. I don't see it. I don't see it at all. Maybe you might see him in a program with L.A. Knight, right? I can see them two go at it because I've actually seen matches with L.A. Knight and um, Karen Cross when they were in the Indies. Right? So I can see a program with L.A. Knight and um, Karen Cross down the line. Um, but you can you can best believe LA Knight's gonna be in the uh, championship picture. You know, I mean he is I mean psh, how can you how can he not be? How can LA Knight not be in the championship picture? It will almost be blasphemous if he's not. So wherever brand he goes to raw smackdown. He definitely needs to be in the championship picture. I mean, anytime this dude come out, he got the he got the crowd in the palm of his hand. You say, but if it's Rock and Cody at SummerSlam, where's that leave Randy Orton? Well, see, this is the thing: Randy Orton don't need to be in the championship picture. I mean. His name alone will, you know, will have him in a high-profile match. But I can see a scenario where him and Cody Rhodes go at it because there's deep history with between those two guys as well. If you factor in their family history, their time and legacy, right, because Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton, when Randy Orton led legacy along with the, you know, Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase, who's out there stealing money alongside Brett Favre, allegedly, but you got that history there. And then um, remember, um, there was a storyline when Randy Orton had retired Cody Rhodes. 
for a while. So there's a, there's a deep rooted history there. And then you got to factor in that Cody Rhodes looked at Randy Orton as a mentor, right? So there would be that dynamic if those two ever, you know, get involved in a, uh, a heated storyline rivalry type of deal, right? So there's that. There's that. Um, but I'm very excited. I'm very excited for WWE. You know, I haven't had this, you know, aptitude to watch wrestling since the Stone Cold Rock Triple H D Generation X, all that stuff back in the late 90s going into the early 2000s. When I was in the military, we used to watch, we used to t- t- tune in every Monday night between WCW and WWE to see what kind of thing was going to go down. And it's been a while since we've been this excited for um, watching WWE. Now, AEW, um, look, I like AEW, but let's just face it, it's gone stale. AEW has gone stale. So they need to find a way to, you know, get people interested in it because as much as I like AW, but a lot of that stuff is going stale now, right? Right. Uh, and I think they need to push younger wrestlers, right? Um, not to get some more Joe. I love some more Joe. Some more Joe is a beast, but so more Joe should not be the AW champion, right? He should not be. You should not have WWE place uh, former WWE superstars going to AW winning championships, in my opinion. If you really want, they did it right with MJF, right? But I really believe they need to push um, homegrown talent to win championships, right? I would like to see Miro or um, when he was in WWE, Rusev come back to WWE and be a main event player there. Because I thought that WWE dropped the ball when he when they had Rusev Day. I thought WWE dropped the ball when they had Rusev Day. Right? But who dropped the ball? It was Vince McMahon that dropped the ball. Because his senile ass couldn't see that. He couldn't see what the uh what was going on. Right, Daniel Bryan, another one. Uh, even though he finally got pushed and all that, but WWE was about to drop the ball with Daniel Bryan because oh, he's too small. They dropped the ball with CM Punk ten years ago, which prompted him to leave. Was was why he left. You can name a look when Vince McMahon was running WWE. There was a there's a countless number of superstars that they dropped the ball on, whether it be Wade Barrett, whether it been Ryback, whether it been um Rusev, whether it been um like I say CM Punk. Kofi Kingston. I mean, how you can have Kofi Kingston, you build him up, have him win the championship at WrestleMania, only to him to drop it in a squash match to Brock Lesnar at uh, during um, Fox's opening um, episode of SmackDown. I thought that was disgusting. But anyway... There's going to be brighter days ahead for WWE under the Triple H um, era. Um, He has his finger on the pulse of what's going on. Um, The storylines are compelling. Um, And it's not just, I mean, it's long-term storyline. Long-term, slow-cooked storytelling, 
right? We starting to see teasers of factions coming together, teasers of factions breaking up, and then eventually they do break up. Or we like to call Easter eggs. Now, what I would like to see, right, if you're going to have Bobby Lashley in this faction with um, the Street Profits, i like to see MVP and Omas in that faction as well. If, In my opinion. If you're going to have Bobby Lashley be the leader of this faction, then bring back MVP, bring back Omos, and have them run, and then have them run rampant with that faction or whatever like that, right? And have, like, somebody like Omos be, like, Bobby Lashley's enforcer or something like that. You know, that's just, you know, a suggestion. I don't know. We'll see how that plays out, right? But, yeah, man. You guys let me know what y'all think about this. Um, like like I said, WWE is really pushing this Triple H era. We've seen the changes over the course of the year and a half, going almost two years that Triple H has been in charge of WWE. We Like the intro to the lighting of the ring, to the entrances, to... Um, Changes of the superstars' um, interest music. Little subtle changes here and there over time, not overnight. Yeah, we know, yeah, Lashley don't need an enforcer, but that that would you know pretty much go along that wrinkle of him leading a faction, though. That's what I'm saying. But do Bobby Lashley need to force it? Hell no. Hell no. But that would just add a wrinkle to the uh, character leading a faction or whatever like that. That's why I say that. Um, But yeah, man, tell me what you think about what's going on in WWE. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Uh, do you want to see somebody else in charge? So let me know what you think in the comments or whatever like that, man. But I, I'm very excited for the future of WWE, man. Straight up. Especially if they put the championship on um, back on Bobby Lashley or, you know, even L.A. Knight. Because L.A. Knight, you know, I, I like that character. You know what I'm saying? But if you're not a subscriber to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Hit that like button and share these videos on your social media platforms. Last but definitely not least, shouts out to the LDBC. This your man. Scream at me. Hurt!